Hey guys, Brent Hull Build Show. Looking at the Victorian style today. Now this is all part of our architectural series where we're looking at architectural styles of houses, right? We looked at Georgian, Colonial Revival, Arts and Crafts. Now we're looking at Victorian. Now, this is a Queen Anne Victorian, right? What is it? Why is it a Queen Anne style house? Why is it Victorian, right? So we're gonna look at that, we're gonna study that. We're gonna have a good time, we're gonna learn a lot. So come on and join me. That's where we are. This is the uh, Ball McFarland House, Edelman McFarland House. It is owned by a store at Fort Worth, right? This is Victorian, okay? Now, it's called Victorian because Queen Victoria was on the throne until 1901 in England, but we call it still the Victorian period. In America, you're really 1860 to 1900 is considered Victorian, but this is a Queen Anne Victorian, okay? So this is a later period in the Victorian era, and it's this mix of materials and all the different parts and pieces on this house that make it kind of Queen Anne, that define it that way. This wraparound porch is a classic Queen Anne detail. But if you look at the outside, you've got copper on the roof, we've got this sandstone, we've got marble on the porch, we've got brick. We've got all these different parts and pieces. Now, this is what some people, when the, Queen, when the Victorian period seems over the top, it's things like this, right, that are, that are just so much going on right the 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 dormers on the outside the uh the pitches of the roof all the ornamentation right all the carvings and details all make this really you know over the top in victorian now the reason they did this the reason they built this way is because they could right and were able to do things like these formed copper and this the the cresting at the top of the roof and the finials and all those different things are made by hand with machines okay not just purely by hand but machines make it much more easy now this house is pretty interesting this used to be called quality hill okay this was the finest part of fort worth in fact mrs ball when she moved here encouraged her doctor to come and their doctor actually lived next door and so this too is a queen anne style house you'll notice though it doesn't have quite the same quality of materials that the ball mcfarland house does so um, two great houses we're sitting right on the edge of a bluff that looks out over the deal there's a great breeze here right there's a river that runs through fort worth we're on the bluff of that river great breezes this is where all the rich people would have lived so we're looking at a Victorian house that's actually really high style, okay? So a lot of these materials are not typical, right? The, the, the quality of products that they put inside, as you'll see, are over the top. But we're talking about a, a, a house that is late industrial period that helps define, right, all the different things that are going on here. And so when we go inside, you're going to be blown away by the millwork because, well, it's just an explosion. So come on inside. We'll check it out. Okay guys, I just wanted to stop on the front porch. Now, as I said, the Queen Anne style, this wraparound porch that we've got here is kind of typical of that style. But we're also talking Quality Hill, right? This is one of the nicest areas of Fort Worth at the time, 1899. We're beginning to see a little bit of the technology that was taking place. Remember, this is really early lighting, okay? This is, uh, you know, pre-air conditioning, right? And so we're gonna see some things. One, most of the windows have screens on them, right? They also have shutters and these operable shutters. This was an operable shutter that actually cranked that allowed the shutters to open and close. One of the things I love is, is the quality of materials they put in here. These are, these are all turned sandstone, right? You got this uh, rusticated sandstone block, which is really beautiful. Um, notice how they wrap the copper around the beam on the outside, right? Beautiful detail. And look at this here. So the draining on this thing is this little drain that comes off here that has a drain at the back end. So the porch pitches this way, it goes into that drain, it comes off because water can't get over this thing. They had to create a trough, a little gutter inside this system that helped build this thing, right? This is a well-built, well-designed house. And I talked about the, the quality and different number of materials, right? Got this sandstone, we've got brick, we've got marble, right? All these great materials. I'm gonna take you inside, get ready, because it's pretty awesome. Okay, guys, we're inside. The uh, explosion of moldings and millwork here, right? 
Um, we're, again, we're 1899, right? So there, there's a lot of industrialization that's taken place here. But remember too, this is pre-air conditioning. One of the things that's pretty cool is this little contraption here. Remember, on the outside we had that screen. Um, on the inside, they would have these uh, uh, transom bars, right, that would move up and down, that would allow air to move in and out of here, right? We're in the south, you really want those windows to work with the upper and lower sash open and closed so you can get some convection air in here. The other thing that's interesting is that you would think that in 1899 you would have this wood burning fireplace and everything else, but fire was a big hazard at the time in cities all across the country. So this fireplace, really, notice that there's no wood there, right? It's all pressed and molded brick, right? Which would have been pretty typical for that period, right? Because uh, by this time, and in all the fireplaces you're gonna see in this house, you're gonna see a bunch of tile surfaces, woods way on the outside, because fire was a big, big problem. Now, when you see millwork like this, with all this detail, with all this carving, the brackets, the beading, all this stuff, you know, how did the craftsman do it? How did he build it here, right? Well, he didn't, okay? This would have all come from a mill. This would have all come from a molding catalog or a millwork catalog that they would have ordered from. Now, the, the cool thing is, is that this is all oak in here, okay? Now, the reason you see oak and hardwoods like that after the Industrial Revolution is because we could, right? You can't do this kind of millwork, right, without incredible expense pre-industrial, okay, because it was too hard to work all this wood, too expensive. So th the fact that we have power molders, power shapers, power machines like this enable this, right? Look, you've got a coffered ceiling in here, you've got oak here, and you've got maple in here, right? One of the hallmarks of really nice houses is that they oftentimes will switch woods between rooms. One of the other houses we'll look at, Thistle Hill, has an oak room, a bird's eye maple room, right? A mahogany room. They have all these different wood choices, right? It was at that time, it was, a, it, was a, it was a way to kind of show off what they were doing, what was going on. The lighting is kind of funky, right? Th this is 1899, so lighting would have been right on the edge. Upstairs, we're gonna see a gasolier, okay? Gasolier is basically a light fixture that was wired for electrical and gas, okay? They didn't really trust electrical at the time, if you can believe that. Crazy, because a gasolier is basically an open flame. So then we come into this formal room. Again, notice the, the, the area outside the fireplace. No open logs, right? No, no open embers. This would have all been uh, gas-fired, coal-fired things, kind of thing that were inserts inside of fireplaces. Again, because fire was such a big problem. But again, explosion of millwork, right? All these different cool moldings and details. And if you look at built-ins like this, and if we come into the dining room and look at built-ins like this, this, this comes right out of the molding catalogs, okay? So this is a, um, a something that would have been ordered as furniture almost. We've got two corner cabinets, one on either side. Beautiful dining room. Again, tile around the insert in the fireplace. Coffered ceilings, all really high style. Now. It's also 1899 where there's a lot of class differences, a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, upstairs, downstairs, backstairs, front stairs, right? Notice what happen what's happening right here. We're going into a paint grade area there, okay? So this is the dividing line where you would have, uh, you know, this is where the family would live, this is where the help would live. You've got oak floors here, you've got pine floors there. You got paint graded wood here, you got stain graded wood here, so, right? So we're gonna see that upstairs as well, this kind of separation between the help and the family. And then finally, look at these floors. These were called wood carpets in the molding catalogs, right? These were something that, again, was been ordered out of a mill. It's not some, something someone would have laid up on site. It would have been made in a mill. It was actually like a carpet. It actually could have been rolled out. So they would have ordered this thing, cut it to fit it in place, and we've got these beautiful inlaid floors all around this house. Let's go upstairs. I'm going to show you the bedrooms. I'm going to show you the third floor where the help would have lived. It's really a fun thing. So we're now on the second floor, right? This is when, where the family would have lived. These were, you'll notice the quality of the materials is still pretty high. We're still looking at a lot of oak. We're still got the beautiful details around these doors. I talked earlier about the gasolier, right? This would have been what's called a gasolier light. You have electrical one side, but this arm going up and this knob right here is something you would have turned to get the gas on. Crazy concept to me that you would have this open flame um, just burning away, but 
uh, it was just that period of time, right before before electrical really proved itself. But these are all bedrooms. They're offices now for a store for Worth, but they were they were would have been bedrooms at the time. And you'll see fireplaces in each room. And again, for it, we we noticed the uh, back stairs, front stairs kind of thing, where this door, as it would have closed, right, uh, would have separated the help from the family. And we go to pine floors here. We go to this back stair here that goes up to, the, to their living quarters and paint grade cabinets, right? And so uh, still beautifully made, you know, wonderful in you know, modern comparison, but um, in 1899, this is where the help would have lived, right? Because now we're on that back stair, this goes down to the kitchen, goes down to the basement. The help actually lived in the basement and then help would have lived upstairs. So take you upstairs and show you how different things are versus the way they lived here. So I love coming into an attic space like this because to me, uh, these spaces oftentimes have never been remodeled, right? They've never, the colors oftentimes don't change and you're really seeing a very original space, okay? So, you know, notice that uh, this five panel door, which is a typical Victorian door, but this would be more typical of, you know, what you'd see in kind of in a common working man's house, right? The doors downstairs have all that molding around it and the beading and all the extra detail. This is a little bit more typical, right, to, to what you'd see, not on Quality Hill. I also love it because I get to see shutters and screens and other things like these are screen doors here. These are the shutters I talked about on the outside of the house, all perfectly stored, perfectly, you know, ready to go back on. It's hopefully going to be a project that we're going to uh, take on one of these days. Gasolier again. Again, this one would have had a glass canopy here, but this is where that would have turned on. Again, everything's simplified here, right? This is would have been where the help slept, right? You're looking at these dormers openings and stuff where we're lighting, and even this, right? One, this kind of uh, indicates how things would have been made in a mill, but we've also got probably a mantle, right? That was taken out at some point. Where did it get taken out? All of a sudden we start sleuthing and trying to figure out you know, how this house is put together, what changed over time, because this house is a very original house. So much of it is still, it was in the original family and didn't really change for so long before Historic Fort Worth inherited it, that it's really kind of an architectural gem. And it's a great example for us to look at of what Victorian looked like, what high style Queen Anne looked like in this period. Okay, so coming out the help door, right? That's, that's where I belong. This is uh, coming out the kitchen. This would have been a stair down for the caretaker. Down here, you see the bluff and it's overgrown now, but this is the original retaining wall. This is the original driveway that would have gone to a garage that's no longer there. You see the other house in the background, but this is you know Quality Hill and Fort Worth. This is the Victorian era. This is 1899, right? This is a great example of a high style Victorian house, right? Where you see this explosion of millwork, all this asymmetry and the wraparound porch. Great high style house, which has been preserved wonderfully by a store for worth. But this is a great house. This is Victorian. This is Queen Anne. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.